Awesome Bennett Tice turned 41 and marked 10 years in detainment in August 2022. Tice is an American award-winning journalist, an Eagle Scout, a Georgetown Law School student, and a veteran Marine Corps captain who served in Iraq and Afghanistan. He grew up dreaming of being an international correspondent and was published in school newspapers in every school that he attended. He would understand things and, you know, ask questions. And he pretty early on started expressing an interest in being a writer, being a journalist. We've got what we think is his earliest published work in Nature Friend magazine. Dear Nature Friend, I enjoy reading Nature Friend magazine and I am glad to have a story to share with you. I live in Houston, where the summers are very hot. One day in late August, when we were driving, we saw a very strange sight. It was a bird sitting on its nest, which was on the top of a stop sign pole, with no shade at all. We could not understand why I had chosen such an unprotected place. One day, when we drove by, we noticed the bird was gone. My mother asked me to climb the pole to see if there were babies in the nest. We were disappointed to find the shallow nest empty, and we never saw the bird again. Your friend, Austin Tice, age 10, Houston, Texas. He entered Syria through Turkey as a freelancer in May 2012 to cover the Syrian uprising, risking his life to tell people's stories and daily struggles against violence and atrocity. He described in his own words uh, how people there are dealing with life and death every day. And, there's n and it was as alive as he'd ever felt. And among people who were as, as alive as he'd ever experienced. But it was deeply, deeply satisfying and important to him, and he felt that and expressed that. Tice was probably the only foreign journalist in the southern parts of the country surrounding Damascus. He traveled across the country to report from different locations, including Idlib, Yabrud, El Tel, and Dariya, where he celebrated his 31st birthday on August 11. You know, you're just talking street fighting, uh, you know, <laughs> Molotov cocktails, any, any weapon you can basically imagine in an in a urban street fighting environment. It was, it was pretty exciting. Um, but uh, I, I, was, I was able to get some pretty good shots that way and, and tell a pretty good story afterwards that I think uh, otherwise, you know, never would have gotten told. I've seen quite a number of funerals and dead family members and people tend to be very open about those things. I think in a lot of ways, maybe it's a form of therapy for them that maybe their grief is you know, gonna lead towards a, a greater solution here. What really stood out about Austin was, A, he was in the country. Most of the reporting we were getting from Syria at the time was by people who were outside and their sources of information were something they'd seen on Twitter or that had been posted somewhere or we were getting it from some opposition Syrian group in Turkey. And so uh, he had the advantage of being there and plus he had a military background, a fairly extensive one as, a, as an infantry officer. So he actually understood what he was seeing. And that was important because so much of what we were getting really had no military context to it. And, and that's what I really liked about what he did is that he could explain how the Syrians were conducting an operation. On August 14, Tais was detained at a checkpoint outside of Damascus after he left Dariya and was heading to Beirut, Lebanon. On September 26, a 47-second video labeled Austin Tice Still Alive was released by an unknown YouTube account showing Tice blindfolded and held by armed and unidentified men. Experts and the State Department suggested that the video may have been staged to show that Tice is captured by an extremist group, as there are discrepancies between the footage and videos published by these groups. Since then, Tais has been detained with silence and secrecy. No group has claimed responsibility for his capture, 
and the Assad regime never acknowledged detaining him and refused to give information on his whereabouts. Austin had the makings of an excellent journalist. I think he had a certain humanity about what interested him. He certainly had uh, the kind of courage, I'd say, that let him go to places that other people weren't willing to go. And he was able to establish a relationship with people. In fact, you know, a few days after he disappeared, I got an email from somebody in Texas, a Syrian who had grown up in the region where Austin disappeared, and he had gotten messages from uh, people who had been with the insurgents with Austin who were also a little perplexed about what had happened to him. And I thought, you know, that's a really interesting situation that I'm hearing from somebody who's in the United States, who's talking to his friends back south of Damascus, and they are looking for a journalist and they remembered enough about him or they were familiar enough with him or felt friendly enough with him that they had a friend in the United States track down his editor to see if I knew what had become of him. Uh, you know, I, I think Austin had a, a way of making friends and attracting people. And of course, he was a, a good writer a very smart guy, a very observant person, and I'm hoping one day to meet him. In 2018, Robert C. O'Brien, Special Presidential Envoy for Hostage Affairs, stated that the U.S. government believes Tice is alive. The Biden administration also contends that Tice is alive. The U.S. government has been working on bringing Tice home and to negotiate his release, but all efforts have failed so far.